in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to create lots of different customized backgrounds because spectrum aqua are that beautiful water-based dyeing which i've mentioned before you've got a wealth of possibilities available to you with lots and lots of different techniques this is just one of them creating you know, a lovely kind of spritz wash diffused ethereal background we're going to have a look at how to do that and then I'm going to show you some other inspiration of different types of custom backgrounds you can create so we'll move this out the way and what I've got here is a piece of watercolor card and I, you don't need that I've only got that so you can see the colors that I'm putting on here with a piece of acetate on top um, you need the acetate because you don't want the ink to dry it needs to remain wet and I put the watercolor card underneath so you can see the colors I'm applying you don't have to have that at home then I've got three colours of my pen ready. Um, I've got a blue, a purple and a pink. And we're going to start with the purple colour. Now, I'm going to be creating a background on an A6 piece of card here. So to save me wasting a lot of ink and time, I don't want to work on the full piece of acetate. So just to give me somewhere to work, what I like to do is just frame the piece of card that I'm going to create the background for. So now I've got a general idea of where I'm going to apply the ink. So I'm going to start by just scribbling on the acetate and it doesn't have to be um, managed where you put that it is just random so they're just random little squiggles of where I would like colour to be so that's my first colour this is my second colour blue now you do need to be a little bit careful about the colours you choose because you could end up with mud so you'll notice here that I've used a blue based purple and a blue which are fine because they're the same from the same side of the color wheel and then I've got this pale pink as well which is again on the same side of the color wheel so isn't going to cause me any problems when it comes to creating this background if I'd put in here an orange or um, another like a green I would have ended up with brown horrible muddy brown splotches so have a little practice with your colors and see what you come up with but you would need to just be a little bit careful uh, when selecting which colors to use blue and yellow would have been fine because I would ended up with little bits of green if you see what I mean so I've just scribbled randomly on there now I've got a little um, this is just a cosmetic bottle with some plain water in and I'm just going to spray over the top of that quite liberally with water so that the colour starts to mix and then I take my piece of watercolour card that's clean this is where you get mucky fingers I place it inside there and I give it a little squidge around now you can see the colour coming out the sides and that's fine and you can move it around if you want if you want to get a little bit of a different effect and what you're doing is absorbing all that water and dye from the acetate into your background and you can see how my fingers are getting a bit mucky and I'm getting colour on the back. It doesn't matter because it's going to be used face down anyway. But I'm mixing all that colour together. I pick it up and you can see how I'm getting a lovely background on there. And then I'll give it a little dry. And if I want to pick up some extra pieces of colour to create more splodges, I can do that. And then just give it a little dry. Basically... There are no limitations with what you can do with this. And I'm just going to move that to one side. I want to move my acetate because acetate and heat do not good bedfellows make. So I'm just going to move that and then keep giving my background a little dry here. Now the less water you use, the more defined the splotches of colour will be. The more water you use, the, the softer the effect will be. Notice how I'm drying the back as well just to help flatten my piece of card okay so if we do that again very quickly I'm just going to clean that away and I'll show you what I mean by that and you'll see the difference between the two and do it again very similarly but with bigger splots splots <laughs> and less water you'll see the difference so same colors but it'll be a completely different effect And this time I've got a piece of card and less water. So a finer mist. <clears throat> a 
you see I haven't got as much splodging out of the sides this time so when I pick it up you can see how I've got less definition in the uh, sorry less mixing of the colors there more definition in the splotches and I can turn that over and pick up any of the remaining color and it starts to really create a lovely background I can add a little bit more water if I want to to reactivate that ink and pick up the remainder there we go I'll just move that acetate out of the way and then if I want to reactivate that a little bit more, I can just spray directly onto the card and you see how those colours then start to move and mix together. And then I would dry them. <clears throat> this is my favourite background technique of all of them because you just never know what you're going to get. It's a surprise every time and every time it's different. And your card will curl but just uh, bear with it with your heat gun and dry it out and you'll see it'll start to flatten down. You do need to do that quite quickly to dry it because the, the ink will keep moving and they will all keep moving and mixing together um, and it'll soften the effect. So do dry it quite quickly. And of course you will go to the edge of your card. I've just done that quick to show you the difference. Turning it over does make the card dry flat. It's a little quick tip for you there. Even though there's no water on the back. You see how that's flattening that out for me. There we go. And then I would just trim that down. And that's exactly how, two entirely different effects, exactly how I made the background for this card. And then all I did was the over stamping that you've seen in a different tutorial. So not only can you do that, just clean up so I don't make a mess anywhere you can do lots of different things so just to show you the different effects this is the one we looked at right at the beginning and this is how it started so I used circles and random splotches and then just spritzed over it let the water do its thing and then dried it this is just a lot of random squiggles which I've then spritzed over with water and then sprinkled with rock salt leave it to dry completely don't force it with your heat gun leave it to dry naturally for a couple of hours brush the salt away and you get that beautiful mottled effect and that's what a card looks like when you use that background this is stamped with versamark and clear embossing powder which when then i do my background over creates a resist effect so you can see you've got those resisted areas in the background and then here i've just done some random swirls and used a little bit of cling film uh, scrumpled up on the top let it dry and you get that lovely marble vein effect there are lots more things you can do the world is your oyster when it comes to doing your custom backgrounds it's the quality of the dye ink you've seen there how easy that was to create how beautiful the finished result is it's messy but it's incredibly fun and i think you're going to have a great time customizing your own backgrounds mm -hmm.